Okay. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, my name is Nerily. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the Digital Marketing Manager with DAFC and I also work in the admissions team. Um, so today is all about our Pharmacy Foundation Pathway uh, with UCC. So I'd like to thank Garod McCarthy from the UCC School of Medicine for joining us today. And uh, he's going to talk a little bit about um, UCC, Cork and, and the pharmacy program offered by UCC. So what we'll cover um, today in today's session is a little bit about why study, why to study in Ireland, um, some insight into the student life with DAFC. Um, Garod, as I discussed, will give us an introduction to UCC and the pharmacy program. And then I'll talk a little bit more in detail about DIFC's International Foundation Year and how that can help students get on to the MPharm degree with um, UCC. So just a few housekeeping issues, if you can keep your microphone muted just to ensure there's good sound for everyone, we don't get any background noise. Um, and we'll have time for questions at the end. Um, so we can use the chat feature on the meeting um, just to type in your questions and myself and Garod will have some time at the end to answer any questions that, that you like. Okay, so we'll start off with uh, some Irish icons. Um, a lot of people think they don't know much about Ireland um, when they first start talking to us, but actually you know more than you think. So if we look at the top left-hand corner, you'll notice um, Guinness, the storehouse in Dublin. Um, Guinness is a, a you know a world-renowned brand, and although it's it's an Irish Irish-owned brand, um, it's actually brewed across 49 different countries, including some Guinness-owned breweries in uh, Malaysia and Nigeria and has served to more than 150 countries around the world. But funnily enough, um, Ireland is not the biggest consumer of Guinness. Uh, we stand in third place behind Britain and Nigeria. So a lot of people around the world enjoy um, uh, the taste of Ireland. If we look at the right-hand corner, we have um, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, this is um, Ireland's national holiday, and it's a day where everyone in the world um, celebrates the Irish culture, um, everyone is Irish, so to speak, and Ireland actually paints the world green. The picture displayed is the, is the St. Patrick's Day Festival in Dublin and the big parade where people come from all over the world to celebrate um, in Dublin for that weekend. But also they um, a lot of the, you know, uh, prominent um, architecture and buildings around the world light up green in order to celebrate Irish culture and the Irish heritage of, of people living in those cities. Um, in the middle on the left is, um, for those of you who like a little bit of shopping, um, Kildare Village is 40 minutes out of Dublin. And a lot of our students have become big fans over the, year, um, they, over the years. They like high-end brands. And Kildare, Kildare Village is a designer outlet, um, a shopping outlet. And there's actually a direct bus from Dublin that drops you at the door of Kildare, Kildare Village and will drop you back to Dublin as well. Um, there's actually the bus to Cork actually stops at Kildare Village as well. <laughs> um, in the middle on the right is, uh, I think everyone will recognise this image, it's the Cliffs of Moa. Uh, it's a must-see visitor attraction in Ireland and um, a million visitors attend every year. It actually stretches 14 kilometres along the coast and at its highest point it rises um, 214 metres. So it's quite a, a breathtaking view. It, um, you know, it's used in a lot of uh, tourism um, videos, but it's also been showcased in a few films uh, such as Harry Potter and The Princess Bride, which would have been one of my favourites. Also um, in the bottom left-hand corner is another UNESCO site. Um, which may look familiar to you as it hit global fame with Star Wars when it was filmed on the island in 2014. So what the island is, is actually Christian monks settled on Skellig Michael in about uh, 588 AD and built a monastery there and remained there until they left in 1100. Um, as I mentioned, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it, I think it's um, it's has a very limited tourist season, though it's very popular. 
Um, but each day, only 12 boatloads of 12 people are allowed to visit the island in order to protect it because it's a nature reserve as well. Uh, in the bottom right hand corner is another UNESCO World Heritage Site, um, I think known as the world's eighth wonder, and that is uh, the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. And Irish legend around this has always fascinated me um, when I visited it many years ago for the first time. Um, so the Irish legend says that the Irish giant Finn McCool created the causeway to travel to Scotland to fight his rival, uh, Benadonna. Um, but he came back smartish when he saw how big Benadonna was. So his solution was to dress up as his own baby son. And so when Benadonna came over and found out how big the baby was, so how big his father must be, he ran back ripping up the causeway as he went because um, there is a similar rock formation on the Scottish coast as well. So that's that's the story of the Giant's Causeway. But it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place to, to visit and, and the rock formations are stunning. So we have a lot of these Irish icons, but that's not the only reason to study in Ireland. And as you see, Ireland is based um, just on the edge, western edge of Europe. And it's known as the land of saints and scholars. And, that, and that's for a very good reason. We have a long history of um, world-class education and a lot of investment in the higher education system, which makes it quite um, high quality and a very attractive destination for students getting wanting to get a globally recognised degree. Now that Ireland is the only English speaking country in the Eurozone, it's become even more of a hub for um, leading global companies to set up their European headquarters. There are sometimes international headquarters. And so that provides um, quite attractive career opportunities for graduates from Ireland to um, gain international work experience with these companies. And even more specifically um, in Ireland, we're well renowned for the uh, friendly Irish welcome. Um, and particularly with Cork, Cork has been um, voted as one of the top uh, student cities in the world uh, in terms of friendliness and, and safety. So um, particularly for international students wanting to study abroad, safety and, and friendliness of, of the local people is very important. And you can be assured of that when you study in Ireland, even in, 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 between Dublin or Cork, um, of a vibrant social international student community with over 35,000 students studying um, in Ireland at the present. A big draw card for graduates in Ireland is the graduate visa, uh, work visa scheme. And that is for both undergraduate and postgraduate students. Um, you can stay up to 24 months for postgraduate or 12 months for undergraduate students to gain international um, work experience in those global companies and, and, and you'll, you'll get that experience during your degree as well. So for example, if you look at the UCC MFARM program, um, you, students who graduate out of that program can stay up to two years in Ireland and, and work. For students who are looking, who aren't sure whether they want to study in Ireland or the UK, or maybe looking at the UK, um, Ireland is still a good destination to do the foundation program, as it it, it can be a cost saving. Um, you can save up to 25% on the cost of your foundation between tuition fees and living expenses, just by choosing Ireland to do your foundation. With DIC's network of universities, you can then progress to university in the UK in a whole range of different degrees. Um, but you've saved that initial cost on, on, the, on your foundation program. In terms of student life, um, student life in Ireland, and with DIFC is a unique experience. We have up to 35, 30 nationalities amongst our student cohort, which means that students meet um, other students from all over the world and, and, and start making that international network of friends. But they're all going through the same emotions, anxieties, nervousness, excitement about studying abroad as everyone else. And so it's the small environment within DOC that helps students to find and gain their feet um, and gain their independence in a smaller supportive environment before going on to university. We're in a much bigger, uh, bigger campus situation. And so with our two campuses in Dublin and Cork, we're based on Griffith College campus. Students have access to the clubs and societies 
um, with Griffith College so they can meet students outside their own classes and, and, and college. Um, there is a lot of welfare and support services for those students who are struggling a little bit more. Plus, um, just living in the vibrant cities of Dublin and Cork, there is a great social scene um, and lots of um, extracurricular activities that they can get involved in. So a little bit about studying with DIFC. We are Ireland's largest independent foundation program and uh, for a foundation provider. And programs we deliver, we are the exclusive delivery partner for the NCUK International Foundation Year and pre-masters programs. And what that means is that the programs that we deliver are designed for and assessed by universities and with specifically with an international student in mind. So it's geared towards helping an international student prepare to succeed at university. In our history, we've helped over a thousand students since 2009 progress on to universities, but this year we actually turned 21. So we've helped many more um, progress on to university in a variety of different degrees in undergraduate and postgraduate. If we just look at UCC, in since 2009, we've had 34 undergraduate students um, progress on to UCC, uh, many of those into pharmacy degrees in recent years. But even over the last, since 2009, between undergraduate and postgraduate, it's been over 100 students. So that's that's more than 10% of our students have, have gone on to UCC. Um, we offer pathways across Ireland, the UK, Europe, USA and Canada, as well as Australia and New Zealand. So it Students have a wide choice of locations of where they can go on to from that program. And as I mentioned, we have campuses both in Dublin and Cork, which are great student cities, small but still international feel, cosmopolitan feel, and a great social life for the students outside of their studies. So that's all I'll touch on for now, and I'll, I'll come back to you afterwards. But what I might do is um, pass over to Road. Now let me just find it here, Grode, and I'll Grode can then talk to us about um, CC studying in Cork and the M Farm degree offered by UCC. So thanks, Grode. No problem, and thank you very much, um, Neroli. Um, okay, I think that has come, come up full. Yeah. You can see that, can you? Yeah. Okay. And how do I? Okay, that's. I wanted to check if I was able to move forward with slides there. Okay, so thank you very much. My name is Garode. Um, good morning or good afternoon or good evening. I guess depending on where you were dialing in from today. Thank you very much. Um, I think narrowly gave you a very good flavour of the country. I'm delighted that she did. She has um, made the move from Australia herself to live in Ireland and 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 remained here. And I'm not surprised. Uh, a lot of people do come and fall in love with the place. So Ireland is small, um, and Ireland isn't always on people's radar. But you see the work that UCC or DIFC do. We really want to bring the message of Ireland to prospective students because we feel really confident that once you're here, you're going to have a great, great experience. And in all of the student, international student satisfaction surveys that you hear, Ireland always features really, really highly in terms of student satisfaction. So it is a great place to be. It's a great place to live. It's a great place to study. And for those of you that are agents today, we really want you to bring that message. And for those of you who are prospective students, of course, we would love to see you come and enrol here in Ireland, not just UCC, but, but any of our great universities or institutes of technology. So um, at UCC, I work specifically for our Faculty of Medicine and Health, and I'm the international manager there. So any international conversations that we have around medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, nursing and midwifery, public health, Public health is really important, as we all know these days, clinical therapies. I'm involved in those conversations. But so specifically, I'm here today to speak with you about 
uh, pharmacy and our school of pharmacy and we've had a very successful partnership with DIFC in terms of students coming through their foundation program and then into our pharmacy program at UCC. The students who have come out of DIFC have done consistently well. They're always featuring in the top 25% of the class. So we're really, really happy with that. And it, it's important for me to say that from the outset. So just to talk a little bit, I guess, about Cork, even though Nerali has done a really good job already. So Cork is a small city. Um, it's the second largest city in Ireland. It has about 250,000 people, so a quarter of a million. But it's very, very much a student city. So our university has approximately 22,000 students. We also have a large Cork Institute of Technology, about 15,000 students. And then we have a, a small number of private colleges. So there are maybe approximately 50,000 students walking around Cork. So one in five people on the city streets is a student. And that has a really positive impact on the environment and on the landscape of the city. It it's, brings a really good energy. It brings a young energy. Um, and of course, all of the cafes, bars, the music scene, all of that develops around so to cater for the tastes of those students. So it very much is a student city. It's a very walkable city. So everywhere you need to go, you can get um, on foot. Students often ask me about, do I need to use buses or trains or taxis? And what I say to them, if you have a good serviceable pair of legs, you'll get where you need to go in Cork. Our university is very old, so it's located very close to the city centre. So everything is within walking distance. So I think that's an important part of Cork. We like to joke in Cork. Of course, we, we know that Dublin is the capital of Ireland. But we, we've got the second, the kind of the second brother, second sister complex where we need to joke a little bit about it. And we refer to Cork as a real capital of Ireland. And now some people back us up, you know, the Lonely Planet Guide, Condé Nast Traveller magazine, all of these big international publications have said things like everything that's good about Ireland can be found in County Cork. So that's good, I think, because we have a very compact city very cosmopolitan city, multicultural city, but within 10 minutes, you can be out into the countryside, exploring castles, mountains, lakes, playing golf, great scenery. So it is really good in that you have both sides of the coin. You have busy, economic, and cutting edge tech, and then you can be in the countryside relaxing within 10 or 15 minutes. So th these are good options for you to have. Um, just some pictures of the city. So we have a very famous market in the centre of the city. It's called the English Market. Uh, Queen Elizabeth visited um, the market when she was in Cork a few years back. She visited UCC also. And the centre picture you see there is really kind of the centre of the city. And if you look over the tops of the buildings, like I said, there's a very um, important green belt where we do we don't want to sprawl too far so we do make sure that we keep green areas and fields and forests and walking and trekking out there and um, it's also a big hotbed of industry um, for example Apple has their European headquarters in Cork Dell EMC has their center of excellence in Cork Pfizer has a major, major presence. In fact, pharmaceuticals industry, which I'll talk a bit more in a moment, is huge in the Cork area. It, it's one of the most important pharmaceutical hubs in all of Europe, based down around the harbour of our city here in Cork. Um, and just to give you a flavour of some of the businesses that are here, and the reason I put this slide, I guess, is to show you that these are all of the big companies, the big multinational players that our university has strong engagement with. Because as part of your study experience at UCC, there is a big chance that you will be going out to one of these companies to do work experience, be that in your undergraduate degree or your postgraduate degree. And on the left-hand side, you can see the pharma tech. So pharma is huge. Really in Ireland, if you're talking about 
why would I come to Ireland? What businesses are there? What job opportunities are there for me if I come and study in Ireland? The big ones really are ICT, the Facebooks, the Googles, the Twitters, they're all here. Pharmaceuticals is another huge one. Financial services is really big here. And food and beverage is also a huge area. And just to give you some perspective on how much investment is coming into Ireland, particularly from the USA. The US has more foreign direct investment in Ireland, a country with 5 million people, than China, Brazil, and India combined. So we're talking about hundreds of billions in US investment into Ireland every year. So we've got our COVID economic fallout, of course, at the moment, like the whole globe does, but in normal circumstances, it's a hugely vibrant economy. It's one of the fastest growing in Europe, and we do hope to be back in a short amount of time to that type of dynamism again. Um, Cork is a city, because it's smaller, of course, it will be a little bit uh, cheaper to live in. This is a broad guideline that I like to give for students. Of course, there's no accounting for taste. Some students, you know, have a particular uh, requirement in terms of their lifestyle and that may be expensive. Others may be quite frugal and um, you can, it, it depends on the student that's coming in. So this is a broad scale. So we would usually say living expenses per month, including accommodation, you know, coffee, expenses, bills, food, excuse me, everything like that. We're talking between 800 and 1,300 a month. We have a lot of campus accommodation at UCC. So we have over 26 dedicated student apartment complexes, and we house thousands of students in those every year. And they are, again, all within walking distance of uni the university and all within walking distance of the city centre. So this is an aerial view of the campus. Um, you can see it's quite, it has a big, big footprint in the city. Um, it's a very old university. So it was founded in 1845 by Queen Victoria. So it's the second oldest university in Ireland after Trinity College in Dublin. But also, it's, I think, in the top 10 oldest universities in all of the UK and Ireland. So it's a very old university, uh, founded by Queen Victoria when Ireland was still part of the United Kingdom. And in 1922, Ireland became independent. And after that, it became known as University College Cork. So it's a university which has four colleges or four faculties within the university. Um, I mentioned earlier, we have about 22,000 registered students and we have a big international representation on our campus. So last year we had over 3,500 international students and they represented 104 different nationalities. So that's about 18% or so of our campus is international. We would like to bring it to 20%. And all of the research suggests that a balance of 80% local and 20% international is a really good balance to have in a university. And this really gives the best educational experience for both Irish students and for international students at, in a university setting. So this is what we're striving for. We're ranked in the top 2% in the world. We're really working on getting that up again at the moment because uh, Rankings are really a bit of a game, I think, as we all know. So maybe we didn't play the game as well as we should have. So our aspiration is in the next two years to be back in the top 200 universities in the world. Um, we have a number of programs at the university that rank in the top 100, 150 in the world, including environmental science, law, history, um, electrical and electronic engineering, psychology, uh, nursing and midwifery, and also importantly, pharmacy. So our pharmacy is closer to top 50 in the world than top 100. So a lot of really cutting edge things happening in pharmacy. And the reason we rank so highly in pharmacy is the amount of important research going on. And a lot of this research 
is applied research that we're doing in conjunction with the big pharmacy companies that are based in the Cork area. So I mentioned our, we have four faculties. So we have the faculty or the College of Business and Law, the College of Science and Engineering, the College of Arts and Humanities, and then we have the College of Medicine and Health. And I guess this is probably the most established college within our university. And when we opened in 1849, we were only teaching medicine. So the first 115 graduates to exit UCC in the 1800s were all doctors. Um, but of course, now we've become a comprehensive university in the last 175 years. So we have our university and then we have our colleges and within the colleges, we have the schools. So we have nursing, dentistry, therapies, medicine, public health, our graduate school, and as I'm here to talk about today, our School of Pharmacy. Now you've seen the very old Harry Potter, Hogwarts style, beautiful building, which we refer to as the Quadrangle. Um, beautiful place, a real sense of being involved in education and you know, pride when students and staff walk around that campus. But of course, we need cutting edge modern facilities as well in order to be globally competitive and give the best teaching and learning experience for students. And this is an example of some of our buildings. Um, and some of these, as a pharmacy student, you would access. So for example, on the top right, we have our ASSERT Center, which is to do with simulation and clinical teaching. So here we have simulated surgery, simulated drug procedures, simulated wards and hospitals. Um, so all of these labs are very, very cutting edge. Um, and that top one, the ASSERT Center, is very, very new, only opened a couple of years ago. So it's world-class facilities in a lot of these buildings. The School of Pharmacy itself is actually quite new. It was founded in 2000, uh, opened in 2006. Uh, it got its own dedicated building then on College Road by the university, a very prominent position there. It's a beautiful high-tech building. Um, it is three or four floors. On the top floors, you'll have a lot of research labs going on there, but also big open spaces, small spaces for small group learning and collaborative uh, learning. Of course, it has canteens and all of the rest as well. And the school's mission really is to educate pharmacists to the highest standards. So it's a very, very ambitious school when it comes to producing world-class graduates. And our graduates go off in different directions, uh, usually three directions. Some of our graduates will go and work in a hospital setting, in a clinical setting where they're in the laboratories. Others will go to work in community pharmacy shops, which is a very lucrative business to be in, certainly in Ireland and in Europe. And others will go to work in industry. And of course, a huge number of our students go into the big pharmaceutical companies in Cork and in Ireland and across the world every year. They're very, very sought after. So just to give you some highlights of the programme. So it's a five year integrated programme. So when you exit after five years, you will have both a Bachelor of Pharmacy and a Master's of Pharmacy. Now, you can exit after four years if you want to with a Bachelor in Pharmacy. However, you will not get full accreditation from the Pharmaceutical Society of Ireland if you leave after four years. So my strong advice is that you would remain and do the full five years if you're coming to study there. And anyway, the fifth year for students is primarily work experience. There's eight months work experience and this is paid work experience. So I would strongly advise students to remain and finish the five years. And after that, you will have your MPharm. And as Neralee mentioned earlier, once you graduate with your MPharm, you are automatically entitled to a two year stay back in Ireland to go and look for a job. Um, we guarantee the work placement for you. So we have a big work placement component in both the fourth year and the fifth year. I will show you in a moment. And recent, in the past, some students were paid 
some students were not. This was an initiative in Ireland led by the UCC pharmacy students. They lobbied really hard that they wanted to be paid for these placements. And the government changed the ruling about three years ago where students can now be paid for their work placements. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word guaranteed to be paid, but the majority of our students going into work experience are being paid for it. And we would hope that that would be 99, 100% of students going forward. And you can choose which type of experience you would like to do. Um, we take in approximately 80 students onto the program every year. And about 10 of those students are usually international. Um, and they come from a range of nationalities and a range of backgrounds. Um, the piece on the bottom accredited by the PSI, that is the Pharmaceutical Society of Ireland. And this is a globally transferable um, accreditation. So if you have on your degree, if you have on your uh, CV a degree that's accredited by PSI, this will open doors for you, not only in Ireland, but all around the world. And the last item, QP status, is qualified person status. And this is a really important certificate that you get when you graduate from pharmacy. And this also opens many doors for you. So this will allow you to go into a clinical setting and do trials to test new drugs. It will also allow you to go into any laboratories in any of the large pharmaceutical companies. And this certification allows you to be this person who designs, creates and tests drugs really really important stuff and hugely sought after in the market um, i speak with our international students regularly because it's really important for me that i get their honest feedback and like i am happy to say that the feedback is almost universally good they feel that the school of pharmacy at ucc is very much like a family um, the lecturers and the professors, while being highly educated and professional, feel like family and friends. So there isn't that big divide. So from day one, they want you to start feeling like a pharmacist, talking like a pharmacist, and they will speak with you like a peer. And this is the feedback that I'm getting. I'm not a pharmacist. I merely work in international. So it's good for me to hear those things. So all of our professors and lecturers are research active. So this will all trickle down to students from day one, because whatever is happening in the creation and the dispensing of drugs, whatever is happening in um, chemistry, uh, chemical analytics, the cutting edge stuff, you will find it because your lecturers are most likely to be very much involved in what is happening. So you will always be right at the front and center of where pharmacy is at. We have UCC's motto is a tradition of independent thinking. So we really want to give you those skills from day one to think critically, to think for yourself. We will support you, but we will also encourage you. What do you think? You tell me what you think. So and at the end of five years, students have that confidence that they will be able to make these decisions that are really important and be professional in that regard. So. As I said, this comes from a strong sense of mentorship. So when you enroll at Pharmacy at UCC, you will be given a body, both a student body, but also an academic mentor. And they are the people who will be with you throughout your five years. So if you've got any academic issues or even personal issues, these are the people you go to. And as a result, we have almost a 0% attrition rate amongst our students, especially our international students. So if you start and get into pharmacy at UCC, you're very, very likely to graduate out of pharmacy at UCC. So I think that's good to know that we support you right through your journey. We want our students to pass their exams and progress. We don't take any pride in being so difficult that 20% of students fail every year. No, that's not the way we think. We want you to finish this journey with us.
a very busy and big looking slide here now. You don't need to focus on it too much and we can circulate these slides to you later and it's being recorded. But to give you an idea of what you will do every year, of course, in your year one, you will be looking at the pure sciences and the foundations of pharmacy. And um, you'll be looking at pharmaceutical chemistry, formulation science, biochemistry, all of these important foundations in the sciences. But we'll also be very much focusing on creating the pharmacist and the professional. And as you can see, professional practice is being introduced to you from year one. If you fast forward to years four and five, you can see now you have your work placements. And we would advise students to mix these work placements so that they could get a sample of both. So for example, in year four, perhaps you go into an industry and you do four to six months placement in an industry. And then in your fifth year, you go into a hospital setting and maybe do your practice there. And you have a well-rounded experience at the end of it all. And it really helped you decide on what future career and future path you want subsequently. The pharmaceutical industry, as I said, is huge in Ireland. And nine out of the top 10 biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world have a major presence in Cork specifically. So Pfizer, GlaxoSmithKline, Novartis, um, Eli Lilly, Johnson & Johnson, which is now Jensen, all of them are based around the Cork Harbour area. So huge, huge opportunities post-study to go and work with these guys. And in fact, I did an exercise in looking at where our graduates have gone for the last three years. And I realized that 100% of our graduates from the last three years have gone in to working in the pharmaceutical sector be that community pharmacy, clinical pharmacy, industrial pharmacy. In fact, we calculated that it was 110%, that we actually don't have enough graduates to satisfy the demand to go and work in the pharmaceutical industry. So again, while I, I'm always afraid to use the word guarantee, I would say you have a really, really good chance of staying in Ireland after you graduate and work in one of those three areas, whichever one you decide. And of course, we have lots of partnerships with these companies and you know, our students go there all of the time. So this is just a couple of photos. This is our class from 2019 and our awards. We have a nice um, balance of both male and females in the class. Our students do really well. I think um, down on the bottom right was um, one of our uh, Vietnamese students who studied at DIFC, and I believe, and maybe Neralee can confirm this, I think, did he win the, the foundation got, student of the year? Yeah, he got top marks um, for his stream. Brilliant. So he is now in his third year at UCC and is always consistently top of the class at UCC and is doing really well, um, is very involved, not just involved in studying, but is very involved in clubs and societies and in sport. He plays a lot of badminton. Um, he's living with Irish students in a house. They, they, he's really integrated well into the programme and he's not just embracing the programme, but embracing the wider um, life and experience that I would um, encourage students to do. I'm just giving a few slides there that, that really are necessary. So, of course, when you're studying at UCC, we don't want you to study 24 hours a day. We really want a well-balanced student. We want you to get out there, join our, one of our hundreds of clubs and societies. Whatever sport you're into, it's there. If it doesn't exist, please set it up for us. You get some signatures from students who are interested. The students' union will give you some money and you can set up that club or society. So wh whether it's sport or whether it's politics or the environment or pharmacy or medicine or philosophy or debating, please get involved. There are lots and lots of opportunities there for you. Um, this is just one of our medicine and health students at the moment. He won the silver medal in the Olympic Games. He um, is also, with his brother, their world champion rowers. Ireland is pretty good for rowing. 
Cork especially is very good for rowing. But he's just one of our students at the moment studying in our Faculty of Medicine and Health. So I think that is enough for me for now. Um, thank you for listening. I hope I didn't go on too long. Um, but we would be, I'll pass back to Nerily now. I think she has a couple of things she'd like to update you on. So thank you. Thanks, Gerard. I'll just go back to me. Now, okay, I think I can see that. Okay, so thanks, Gerard. Um, that was re really informative and I learned a few things myself. Um, so you've heard about the amazing opportunities that a pharmacy degree from UCC offers. Um, and what I want to talk about now is how you actually get there um, with the support of DIFC. So we offer a placement guarantee through our NCUK partnership so that once a student successfully passes the program, you are guaranteed a place with one of our university partners. Um, but if you look at our class from 2019, 98% um, of our students achieve their first or second choice, what they call the first or insur insurance choice university which is a really high um, um, achievement rate in terms of first and second choice. And it means that the students um, going through the placement process, and I'll touch on that later, um, have really researched their options, made informed decisions, and are, um, are helping with that. Okay. Um, I touched on this earlier, so I'll skip over that. We ha have had over a thousand students progress on to university and the range of nationalities. So why would a student study foundation? Um, one of the main reasons um, is either to, to improve your English level skills or academic skills. Um, this, the program is assessed as equivalent to the British curriculum A-levels, um, but it's a shorter program. So A-levels is conducted over two years. Foundation is either six or nine months, depending on when you um, when you join. But the difference between it is that it's a better preparation for international students studying at university, because it's specifically geared toward the needs of international students. So some high school certificates abroad, um, well, many of the high school certificates abroad aren't, um, aren't eligible for direct entry onto a degree. So you need a foundation you need to bridge that academic gap. Likewise, if you have studied um, in, a, in a foreign language, if, if you're not a native English speaker, then your English skills may not be at the required standard for studying university and, and it may actually set you back in your university studies. So studying um, a foundation in an English uh, medium will help you build up those uh, presentation skills, your assignment writing skills, even your reading and speaking skills in order to uh, be a confident and successful uh, university student. Another reason is simply to have a little bit of time to adjust to the weather, the culture, environment and a new country. That can be quite a daunting process for a 17 or 18 year old. Um, so we do a little bit of orientation to Western culture. Our social program and our students um, services have a you know, personalized wellbeing support program that will help you adjust to living in a different country away from your family and helping you to learn that independence. We put a lot of effort into um, pastoral care, uh, well-being support, and also just helping students with their time management to leave some time, as, as Garode said, to have an outlet from study, that it's not just study, 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 that you have um, social activities to do. You get involved in some clubs and societies and, ha and have an outlet outside of your studies. And then one of the main reasons, too, is the guaranteed progression. So. The, the confidence that you can start a program and know that once you pass the program, you have a guaranteed place in a university afterwards is, a, is, is, is great security for someone um, starting their foundation and their study abroad journey. So this is just a, a, a little testimonial from one of our past students, Mark. He's from Benin. Um, Mark actually went on to study pharmacy with Liverpool John Moores in the UK. Um, but what I felt from his testimonial was he covered three main things as um, that helped him in his onward studies. He's getting 
you know, first class on um, distinctions every year in his degree so far. Um, and he's really, really going um, quite successfully through his studies. Coming from a French speaking country, the EAP English for academic purposes was very important for him. Although he was quite strong in his English spoken skills, things like the assignment writing and the presentation skills have benefited him and will also benefit native speakers because being able to speak English and being able to step up in front of a, um, your peers and do a presentation with confidence are two completely different things. And, and this is something that you learn through the program. Another thing um, would be the research skills that he touches on. So being able to um, source material, reference material appropriately, um, but also save time in that process by using tools that are available. This We go through all that with you and, and teach you those skills that are going to save you time and headache when you're at university and under pressure with assignment deadlines. And then, as I touched on earlier, the personal welfare support. You know, there's not a student that comes through our door that doesn't experience homesickness or some sort of um, anxiety about um, studying abroad. And it may hit straight away or it may hit three months after after they start. It, every student is different. Um, but we keep a close eye on our students. We keep uh, we have regular meetings, individual meetings, and our student services team are always on hand to help you, whether it's with your studies or whether it's something going on in your personal life, which is very important. So in terms of what you'll study on the program, it, there's four key subject modules, English for academic purposes, as I mentioned, and then you'll study mathematics, chemistry and biology. So these are a combined study where you'll, you'll learn through theoretical subject knowledge like lectures, then interactive class discussions in smaller classes, as well as lab practicals in the science subjects. And the way you're assessed on these is through a combination of coursework and examination. So it's 30% coursework and 70% examinations. And there'll also be some you know, preparation exams and that in between that aren't assessed, but help, help you keep on top of where you're at and where you need to be. Another strong part of the program is what I call soft skills. So these are skills that are not only going to help you in your university studies, but for the rest of your career. And so these are things like critical thinking, problem solving, presentations, as I mentioned, and time management. So these are study skills that we work on through our weekly tu tutorials with you to help you um, then progress to university and you'll, you'll be a confident, independent student and ready to um, attack any of the subjects that you're going to study. Okay, so you finished the foundation um, and you've done your exam. So how do you actually get to university? And this is actually a concurrent process. So from the moment you start with DIFC, you will have weekly placement tutorials that are primarily geared at your placement at university. So it starts off very broad. So we, we take a look at your personal and career objectives. What are you hoping to do? Um, you know, what is it you, you want to become a pharmacist? You want to study pharmacy? What does that career actually entail? So we go into a little bit of that with you and help you explore those um, career objectives and how they marry up to your personal objectives. And then you do a little bit more research in terms of the courses and the universities that um, would uh, offer those courses and the types of universities, the types of um, cities that they're, they're in, the student experience, and a little bit what, on what uh, Garo touched on. Then once you're kind of, again, narrowing down your choices, you then look at your course options and how they link up from their entry requirements to your predicted grades. So after you do your midterm and your mid-semester exams, you'll get your predicted grades. And say, for example, if you look at the MFARM program with UCC, the entry requirements for that degree from foundation is a B in your EAP subject and then two A's and one B across your subject uh, modules. So if you are on track to get that, great, then UCC can be your top preference. Um, if you're not, you can still choose UCC as an option in case, you know, you know as an option 
that you can work towards. But we'd also then look at, okay, what would meet your predicted grades at the moment? So you have backup options. From there, once you've refined your choices, we start working on how to write a, a, a standout personal statement. And a personal statement is very important as it's your personal introduction to the admissions team at a university. It's your chance to tell them about yourself and why they should offer you a place. Alongside that, we also offer um, have a university fair every year in February where the university representatives from all our partners come to Dublin uh, they do presentations over a couple of days and then we have a fair one afternoon where you can go around and talk to the universities about the degrees they offer, potential scholarships that might be on offer and just, you know, student life in, in the university in the city that they're located in. And then after that uh, fair is when you refine your choices and you make your applications. So we'd make three applications for students on the Foundation Science Program. And following that, then you'll get your conditional offer letters. So again, a conditional offer letter from UCC would be that you um, achieved a B in EAP and two A's and one B in your subject module. You then have to, to choose which is your first choice and which is your insurance choice. Um, and you might have a couple of insurance choices if you get all three offers. That tells us and the university kind of where you were thinking at the moment and it helps with planning and it helps them with um, prioritising in terms of unconditional offers. Uh, for students who have chosen to study abroad out of Ireland, we would then help you with researching the visa requirements and accommodation and all that sort of um, background support. And once your final results are released, we send them directly to the university on your behalf and we liaise with the universities to then get the unconditional offer if you meet the conditions. Once you have an unconditional offer, then it's time to confirm your place and pay your fees and you're off to university. If you don't meet your, the requirements of your conditions or you've had some sort of change of heart, our placement team would then work with you to look at options and make the appropriate applications as a last minute. That would obviously restrict your options, um, but you know we would work to ensure that you have a placement to go forward on. Okay, so you know the requirements to get into UCC, but how do you get into foundation? Basically, there's two requirements. You need to have completed your high school qualification, and I'll touch on those, and you need to have a certain English level or an IELTS level of at least five or equivalent. So we'd, we'd accept IELTS, TOEFL and Pearson PTE. And this year in particular, because of um, all the closures of the English testing centres, we're also accepting Duolingo, which is an online English test that you can do at any time from home and the results are released within a couple of days. So that's a great option for you to get your English language qualification quickly. And it's also accepted by the Irish Visa Office for visa purposes. So you won't have to worry about resetting an IELTS test. With your high school qualification, you really need to have good passes across, um, if you've done a local qualification, across all the relevant subjects. We have a full list of entry requirements so if you have a specific qualification that you want to check just contact us and we and we'll let you know and some of them are listed on our website as well. We would accept O-level students so students who have done the SPM, um, IGCSEs, uh, YEC um, and those students need to have five C's um, across English, maths and other relevant subjects. We'd also accept um, ASNA level students and international baccalaureate students at a lower level than what a university would because we have that bridging foundation year. Okay, so there's, there's a lot happening in the world at the moment with COVID-19. Um, and so we've tried to make, provide a little bit of certainty um, in times of uncertainty. So obviously the situation is evolving and we are following the advice of the health service executive here in Ireland. Um, but really uh, the safety of our staff and our students must come first. So we've made the decision for this September intake to start the program online for the first semester. So that's September to December. And then students will continue their studies in class from January to June. That just gives us a little bit more time to ensure that 
any social distancing restrictions can be put in place and, and classes can be adjusted as normal, um, but also allow international travel restrictions to be lifted so that, you know, we're not just relying on, on restrictions within Ireland to be lifted. We need students to be able to travel and travel safely. So that's why we've made the decision to study online for the first semester. Um, to promote that, we're offering scholarships for all students for our September intake of €2,000 off the tuition fees, which is a great offer. As I mentioned, we've made adjustments to our English language tests. So Duolingo will be accepted um, for both admission and visa purposes. Um, the high school certificates, if your high school certificate um, has cancelled the exams or they, they won't be issuing the official certificates this year because of COVID-19, we can accept your predicted grades and we've been working with our university partners on this, um, both in Ireland and the UK. Um, and we just need transcripts from the last couple of years to ensure that there's consistency. But we will work with students who don't, who, who can't sit final exams. So if, if that is you or, or you or if an agent, you have students in that situation, please speak to us and we can work with, uh, work with you to ensure the student can progress. One thing that we don't want students to have to do is to delay their studies um, and set it back a year. Being able to continue on in your foundation studies um, straight from high school allows that momentum so they can build on the subject knowledge and they won't have that gap in their year. So they won't be starting, you know, kind of uh, raw again in a year's time. It keeps the momentum on their academic skills going, going ahead. Okay, so just touching on the on the tuition fees. So the foundation year in science, this tuition fees are fifteen thousand six hundred euro. Uh, we are offering the two thousand euro scholarship off those fees. And Jawad, I just saw your comment there. There is no deadline on the scholarship, so all students start, starting with us in September, regardless on when you apply, will get the scholarship. Um, there's also the registration and examination fee, and that's um, linked to our partnership with NCUK and covers basically the examination and the auditing of exams and ensures the qualification, that you exit with a qualification. Um, course materials and medical insurance are 200 euro each. So just briefly on how to apply. If you are applying through an agent, you can they will support you in that and that's fine. Um, if you're applying directly, you can go straight to our website and there is an online application form if you click the apply now button. All you need to apply is a copy of your passport, your high school transcripts to date. Um, it doesn't matter if you don't have your final results yet, you can submit your progress transcripts and your English language test if you have one. Um, if you're looking at the M Farm program and you want UCC, mark UCC pharmacy as your first preference just so we, we know where you're thinking of studying. If you meet our requirements, we assess the applications fairly quickly. So within within a day or two, we'll be back in touch with you, um, either looking for more information or a conditional offer letter and the invoice. You then need to confirm your place with DIFC by signing the place acceptance form and paying your um, tuition fees. And that's through our payment portal on our website. You can do that in um, Euro or you can even do it in most countries in your own currency. Um, through Flywire. So that's on our website as well. If you require a visa to travel to Ireland, we provide you with full visa support. So we'll talk to you about um, the visa requirements, give you a checklist, we'll help you write all your letters, your statement of purpose and your letters of support, um, and then do the final check that you've covered off all the visa requirements before you submit. So we work quite closely with you on that to ensure that um, you have a high chance of visa approval. Once your visa is approved, you're ready to book your flights and, and then you can start your studies with us. For September this year, um, we will be allowing students to start the studies online before visas have been approved as the visa offices aren't open at the moment. So students from Africa and that will, um, you know, normally they'd be submitting visas now um, in order to study in September. So there will be a bit of a delay but we'll work with the students and the visa officers to ensure that the visa office and the visas are approved promptly, um, but it won't affect the, day, the start of your studies. Okay, so I think that's everything. And I've just seen a couple of questions come up here. 
Um, so yeah, anyone who wants to ask any questions, just type them into the chat and we'll work through them. Um, myself and Garode will work through them as we go. I see. Um, okay, so uh, will a student get a scholarship if he defers his intake from September 2020 to the next available intake? So the next available intake is um, January 2021. Um, at this stage, it would be unlikely that the scholarship would transfer unless it's linked to a pathway. So we are offering um, a scholarship for the pharmacy pathway and that will transfer to, um, for, to the January intake. Um, in terms of the fee instalment, we do offer a payment plan for students. So if students want to confirm their place, they can pay a deposit of 50% of the invoice. And then the balance can be paid in one or two instalments um, in September and then November. So by the end of November or by, by December, they need to have paid full fees, as in they have they must have paid full fees in order to sit their mid um, the end of semester exams. Um, Okay, so to get conditional offer from universities, will coursework and exam at DOC be only considered or high school? High school's um, certificates may be considered. Maybe, Garo, you could touch on this in terms of um, UCC's admission requirements. You would look at the high school certificates, yes? Um, yes. So, well, of course, if they're coming through from DIFC, we will be looking at the DIFC exit grades that we, you spoke about. And uh, if they were applying directly, yes, we would be looking at whatever national high school certificate they had. Some we will accept, but not all. Yeah. Um, for example, the students coming directly into pharmacy would be presenting with the A-levels or with the International Baccalaureate, the IB. There are a few others that we do look at, including uh, CBSE in India, but we would need to um, I would need to have a conversation with you first to take a look to let you know what we're accepting. And um, just to talk about UCC fees, because I hadn't mentioned it, um, the program fee is twenty thousand euros per year. There, that's there the fees. Um, we do have a lot of twenty-five percent scholarships, um, UCC School of Pharmacy Excellence scholarships. And a number of our students who have come through the DIFC pathway have achieved and been successful with these scholarships. So we do it by Skype interview. Um, but really, if you're doing well academically and you're doing well in your English language, for those that need to, to have the English language, um, we will do a short, personalised Skype interview with you and you have a really good chance to get that. So a lot of our international students, as I said, that have come through DIFC are paying uh, 15,000 euros per year. And I think, you know, while I know it's expensive, I think you should bear in mind that the average starting salary in Ireland for a graduate of pharmacy is approximately 50,000 euros per year. So, and that rises quickly. So. So I think it is it is ultimately a good investment, although I, I am aware that it is is quite expensive. Thanks, Corrode. Um, OK, so another question, what are, what are your average admission application processing times? So in terms of DAFC, um, as I mentioned, we would look to get back to students within one or two working days, um, either seeking additional information if required or issuing the conditional offer letter. Um, how would it work with UCC Garoad? Sorry, I missed that. I was just reading one of the questions there um, in the. Uh, um, what, what was the question? What are the average admission application processing time? So when a student applies <clears throat> um, to UCC, how long does it take? What what's? Yeah, so it, it can be quite mixed at UCC because I guess all applications that come into UCC go directly to the program uh, director to review. So in one way, that's very good because maybe a student is a little bit below points wise, but they have something else in their CV or their resume that looks good, then they can make some exceptions. It isn't the decision of the central admissions office. It's the program coordinators who make the decision. As a result, sometimes it can be a bit slower, 
But really, the good news is for pharmacy, the turnaround, in my experience, is always very quick. We don't have a huge number of international students on the programme, so applications, when they come in, are turned around quite quickly. So from the point of application, you could be looking to receiving an offer, um, sometimes within two or three weeks. Um, it would be unusual for it to be longer than that. Okay. I uh, just see a question for somebody here about any current Malaysian students studying at pharmacy. Um, we have had Malaysian students in the past. I don't believe, I think we have one Malaysian application for this year. I don't think we've had Malaysian students for the last two years. Um, in the past, we did have Mara government sponsored candidates come into pharmacy. Um, and we've also had self-funded candidates come in. But to the best of my knowledge, for the last two years, there haven't been any Malaysian students who've come in. So we'd be delighted to have um, if you have a, a Malaysian student who's interested and is a good candidate. Okay, great. Um, so just to answer Haruka's question, to take international foundation year, we students don't need to get conditional offers from universities. No, they don't. So we work on that with the student during the program. So the offer they will get is for um, the foundation year and with that they'll get our placement guarantee letter um, as a guarantee of their onward progression once they pass the program. There's no need to secure conditional offers as we met. That's part of the why they're studying with DIFC. And, and just to add to that, for example, if a student is coming to study pharmacy at uh, UCC ultimately and they're enrolling in DIFC first, we will issue a conditional offer while they're on that program. Absolutely. Okay, any more questions? We'll give it just another minute in case someone's thinking of one or typing one. While we're waiting, I'd just like to thank, um, oh, thank you, Duad. <laughs> I'd just like to thank Garoad for your time today. That was really informative. Um, it is um, a popular pathway with our students and it's growing and growing every year. So, you know, for the agents out there, for students that are looking for a career in medical sciences or anything like that, you know, pharmacy is a fantastic option and particularly with UCC, um, just with the, the doors that it opens and the experience that students get um, during their program. So thank you very much, Garo. That was, um, it was really great to have you on today. And thanks to everyone for joining us. Um, I will be uploading um, this onto our agent portal. So, you know, in the next little while, um, next couple of hours, you'll find that there if you want to share it out um, or, or show any students, um, you know, you're more than welcome to. So thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, yeah thanks. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it was really, really